The second way for you to become financially independent is to build up a golden goose or a nest egg that after it reaches a critical mass, you can live off the golden eggs that it provides rather than you murdering your golden goose. Now these golden eggs, they can come in many different forms depending on your situation and how you like to receive your income. It can be income from rent when you have rental properties. It can be income from dividends in case you want to invest in the stock market and live off uh, the income that way. Or it can be interest if you are really conservative and you want to invest in bonds or just keep your money in the bank. So how much does your nest egg need to be for you to become financially independent? Well, all you need to have is two numbers. The first number is your expected return. For example, if you expect your return to be 10% when you invest in rental properties, you write down 10%. If you expect it to be 5% because you're more conservative and you have bonds that provide you 5%, use 5%. Or if you are a little bit more of a risk taker, uh, maybe you have dividends that pay you 15 or 20% a year. So make sure that you find a number that's appropriate for you and your situation. The second number that we need is how much do you want to live on? Let's take the previous example of 2000 a month. So we want to live on 2000 a month and we want to use the second method of becoming financially independent. How much do we need? Do we need to have 1.4 million as well? Well, let's find out. So $2,000 a month is $24,000 a year, which is 2,000 times 12 is 24,000. It's not rocket science, is it? <laughs> and we expect that we can receive 10% a year in dividends, if that's your preferred way, which is my preferred way, actually. So how much do we need? Well. 24,000 divided by 10% is $240,000. So if your golden goose is $240,000, you are financially independent. The really great thing about this second method to become financially independent is that you are not killing your golden goose. You actually nurture it, you carry it, you grow it, and it's alive for the rest of your life. You basically only live of the golden eggs. Now you can also do the math. Maybe you want to live for 4,000 a month, which is 48,000 a year. All you have to do is multiply it by two because it's double. So in this case, you need to have 480,000. Or maybe you want $8,000 a month, which is 96,000 a year. Now you only need close to a million for you to live off $8,000 a month. There are two important factors to consider as well. The first one is inflation. Inflation means that the prices go up every year. So maybe what's comfortable for you today with $2,000 a month, in 10 years maybe you need $3,000 or $4,000 because the prices will go up. Your nest egg needs to grow as well or you need to receive a higher return uh, for you to be able to live of the same amount of money. Now, depending on your preferred way of building your nest egg, in some ways it's already incorporated in uh, that amount. Let's say that you have a rental property and you get 10% rent per year. Now, you can increase your rent every year, don't you? Because of inflation, also your income will increase uh, if you increase your rent. Or maybe you invest in dividend stock companies that pay you a dividend. There are many companies out there whose dividend policy it is to increase the dividends every year. So even with the same amount of money, in the long term, you will receive more money as well. Now, please take note, capital gains is not income. If you have your $200,000 in stock and it goes up to $250,000, it's great, but it's not cash. It's only cash when you sell it. And when you sell it, you no longer receive your income. And the same is true with rental property as well. Maybe you think, oh my God, my rental property increased by 10%. Let's sell the thing. Now you sell it, but now you don't receive income elsewhere. And now you're looking for another rental property elsewhere. But because their prices increased by 10% as well, 
you are no better off. So it's really important to do your research and to have a proper strategy in place. The second factor to take into account is taxes. Make sure that you really pay your taxes, otherwise you will get in trouble wherever you are. Nowadays the governments, you know, they're connected with the banks and online platforms. They know exactly how much you make and if you don't pay taxes on that, you are going to get fined. So make sure that you consult with your accountant or you do your research to make sure that you pay the right amount of taxes. Now luckily for these kinds of incomes, there are tax benefits. So for example, I live in London in the UK and here we have an account called ISA. So whatever, every year we can invest £20,000 tax-free into this account and you don't pay any taxes on the money that this account makes. Depending on where you live in the world, for this kind of income there may be actually tax benefits to you. If you live in a normal job and you pay taxes on your wages, often you pay like 30, 40 or even 50% in some countries. So this can be beneficial for you as well, to make sure that you receive income from your golden goose and your nest egg. Watch the next video to find out the third way you can become financially independent.